Hello. This is an Australian Aboriginal folk tale called Tiddalik. I hope you enjoy. A long time ago, in the dream time, there lived a frog called Tiddalik. He was the largest frog ever known. He was as big as a mountain. Wherever he walked, he crushed trees and plants under his enormous webbed feet. One morning, Tiddalik awoke feeling extremely thirsty. It was raining hard, so he began to drink the rain. He opened his mouth as wide as he could until all the rain was gone. But he was still thirsty. He looked down at the pools and the rivers and the streams and he had a little slurp. What delicious fresh water, he thought. So he drank and drank until every last drop of the earth's sweet water was gulped into his bulging stomach. The animals of Dreamtime began to notice that the world was drier than ever. Something strange and different had happened. It's as if someone is drinking all the water of the world, said Kangaroo. When the animals saw that it was Tiddalik, they became frightened. <gasps> Look how the trees and plants are dying of thirst. Look how the drought is killing insects and animals. <gasps> Look how Tiddalik grows bigger and bigger. The animals were angry and called a meeting to discuss what they should do. Some said that Tiddalik had become too big and too powerful and would never give the water back. Others said that someone must know a way to save the earth. And some had become so thirsty they just wanted to give up. Then the wise old wombat spoke. She took a step forward into the circle of animals, saying, I have an idea. We must make Tiddalik laugh. And then all the water will come pouring out of his mouth. It will spout like a rushing waterfall back into our rivers and streams. The animals agreed with Wombat. What a good idea. They would try and make Tiddalik, the greedy frog, laugh. As the long trail of animals arrived at Tiddalik's home, the giant frog didn't even look up. He just sat there with his enormous belly swollen with water. Kookaburra offered to begin. She cackled and cawed and flipped and flapped to make Tiddalik laugh. But Tiddalik didn't even smile. In fact, he took no notice whatsoever of the poor kookaburra. Then Kangaroo tried. He hopped about, then jumped over the emu. But Tiddalik just sat there. His puffed up face was as frozen as green ice. Then Lizard tried. She waddled up and down on two legs. She made her tummy stick out really far. And she stuck out her long tongue. But Tiddalik didn't even blink. He kept his mouth tightly closed. He was not amused. And then, at last, when the animals were almost in despair, an eel came forward. The drought had made her come onto the land. She was searching for water when she came across the great meeting of animals. She slid across the scorched earth until she was near. I am a stranger in your midst, she said. But I 
would like to try and make the great Tiddalik smile. Please may I try? The animals agreed. They had all tried and failed. Maybe this strange eel could do the trick. She carefully chose her place. Not too near and not too far away. Eel returned the frog's stare with a steady gaze and slowly raised herself off the ground. Then she began to sway. It was the beginning of her special dance. The eel began twisting and turning herself into funny shapes. Faster and faster and faster and faster and faster and faster. And faster. <gasps> but then disaster! Eel accidentally tied herself into a large knot and she fell to the floor with a splat. Frog's eyes gleamed with reluctant pleasure. He held his belly because the last thing he wanted to do was laugh. But suddenly, the great frog's mouth opened. Tiddalik burst out laughing. <gasps> As he laughed, the waters burst forth, gushing out from his mouth and flowing away to replenish the lakes and swamps and rivers. Big streams of clear, beautiful, fresh water. The plants grew again and the animals drank until they were no longer thirsty.